these two Birkins different? And what small feature about them divides the Hermes collector community? Let's talk about it. Today we're talking about the latest collaboration between Mugler and H&M. So just a quick backstory about Mugler. The French fashion house was founded in 1973 by Manfred Thierry Mugler. Thierry grew up from the ground up into an internationally renowned high-end fashion brand. So in 2018, the American designer Casey Cadwallader took over as Mugler's creative director and he was the one that spearheaded this current collection with H&M. The Mugler H&M collaboration features a large line of masculine and feminine pieces ranging from their iconic patch jeans, signature bodysuits and leotards, bodycon panel dresses and leggings. To celebrate the collection's release, musical artists Earth Eater, Shy Girl, Amare and Arka created an exclusive version of the song Music Sounds Better With You, which was accompanied with a sexy, high glam, star-studded music video featuring OG supermodel Jerry Hall and showcasing key pieces in the collection. Every day I don't pray, oh Lord, beg, show me the way, yeah. Make you bless my day, don't let my ozu be in vain, yeah. Every day I don't pray, oh Lord, beg, bless my day, yeah. Now your hand that day, Baba Jackie go get day. H&M's first collaboration with a high-end fashion brand was with the deeply problematic fashion icon Karl Lagerfeld and that was in 2004 and since then there's been around 20 collaborations with high-end fashion brands. Now I do have some fair criticisms of H&M in regards to their labour practices and the part they've played in promoting overconsumption but I have to say that I do get excited when these um, collaborations come out. Like, I just think it's such a unique thing in the fashion world to have a partnership between such a giant high street retailer and some of the most renowned and innovative um, high fashion houses in the industry. As part of H&M's official press release, when asked about the inspiration behind the collaboration, Casey said this. Of course, I really wanted the collection to be true Mugler. It needed to completely encapsulate the spirit of the house. Freedom, daring, transformation, excitement, flamboyance, youth, and offer people an experience of authentic Mugler, which is why you see so many of our iconic pieces within the collection, from bodysuits to tailoring. Here are a few. We could refer to them as dupe designs in the H&M collection. So these are Mugler designs that already exist in the high-end version and the only difference between the high-end and the low-end designs is the price tag and I'm assuming the materials and overall quality but I mean I wouldn't know that because I haven't got you know both, both items in front of me but it's kind of like Eau de Parfum versus Eau de Toilet. Like I said, I'm assuming there is a difference in quality and materials, but I can't say for sure as I obviously don't have both versions right in front of me so that I can compare them. But I will say that on face value, they look pretty similar in the photos. And also, out of context of the collab, I will say that I am a fan of Mugler's designs and just Mugler's fashion artistry in general. But personally, I think it would have been more interesting if they'd created some more new designs for this collaboration. Like still obviously in the essence of Mugler, um, but instead of like remaking these almost, almost one for one versions of already existing pieces, they could have like brought something new to the collection. But you know, I guess the people wanted dupe versions and Mugler gave it to the people. Why does Mugler want to dupe itself? Mugler is and continues to be an extremely popular high-end brand, so why would it want to dupe itself? What would be the incentive for Mugler to make its designs accessible to a wider audience? After all, isn't like high-end fashion about exclusivity? Isn't that like the whole point of luxury brands? They're designed for the few and not the many, right? According to fashion media company Business of Fashion, Muga's collaboration with H&M is a reflection of changing attitudes towards wearing dupe fashion. So this is in part thanks to Gen Z's embracing of dupes and their unashamed flaunting of dupes on social media platforms like TikTok. 
So wearing do versions of popular high-end brands, it no longer carries the same kind of stigma as it did in the past. So one of the benefits of these high-low collaborations is that these luxury fashion houses get a fat cash injection as well as access to a huge marketing platform. So in the case of H&M, they had global net sales in excess of $22.2 billion in 2022. So, so just think of like the advertising budget someone like H&M has. Another benefit is that these collaborations allow the high-end brands to experiment with products that they don't currently have in their existing luxury lines. It's like a way for them to test the waters on whether customers have an appetite for these products. So they could test it in the uh, low end market. And then if it does well, they can then reproduce much more expensive and lavish versions for the high end market. So this is from a Business of Fashions article on dupes. And this is what they had to say. For some designer brands, fast fashion chains and big box stores are almost playing the role of a patron enabling new talent to take their skills and exposure to a higher level. Cadwalda points to pieces he tried to make for his regular collection that simply couldn't happen because of lack of consumer interest. Mugler was acquired by L'Oreal in 2020, but the beauty giant so far does not appear to have lavished the same resources on the business as fashion-focused conglomerates like LVMH or Kering. There's this long leather trench coat in this beautiful teal colour that was in the autumn 2022 runway show, he said. I won't tell you exactly what the Mugler price was, but it was multiple thousands of euros. And it sold under 10 units, and so it had to be cancelled. Cadwalder produced a coat for H&M instead. At $749, it's the most expensive item in the project. He says he's also used the H&M collaboration to experiment with menswear, which Mugler does not currently produce. H&M's sophisticated global supply chain was also part of the draw, even for a design house like Mugler that has pioneered cotton sole techniques for decades. I must be honest, Cadwallader told H&M's creative advisor, Anne-Sophie Johnson, during their launch event in New York City. You did some things with H&M that we can't do at Mugler. To pave the lycra in crystals, to get them super close together and the crystals so big, is really decadent and really beautiful. Cadwallader also mentioned their ability to mass produce body chains that were once a runway-only phenomenon. A H&M spokesperson said the company used 3D sketching to get a better understanding of the more complex products in the collaboration. Okay, tangent time. So in my past life, I worked for H&M as a sales assistant while I was at uni. And back in 2009, yeah, I'm old, H&M did a collab with Jimmy Choo. So this is the only H&M designer collab that I've actually purchased items from. So the collection featured a load of like sexy heel designs, obviously, and then some handbags and some jewellery pieces. Um, and I instinctively remember how excited I was for this collaboration. I'd insert some clips of what some of the products looked like. So I queued at the flagship store in the UK on Oxford Street in London to buy a pair with my employee discount. And from a consumer perspective, I think I wanted to get my hands on something from the collection so bad because I was, first of all, I was a broke uni student and I would never have been able to afford Jimmy Choo otherwise. And it made me feel good that I kind of participated in this like luxury club, even if it was kind of like by proxy, because these are like a lower end version of the actual Jimmy Choo shoe. So yeah, I wasn't on no carry level, but it did make me feel like I was, I was doing something. Um, so these were the heels that I got. Uh, do I still have them? No, I don't. I think I got rid of them a couple of years ago. But I had them for ages and I wore the shit out of them. I actually wore them to my graduation with, with this like Harvey Lager imitation dress from French Connection. And I actually found the exact same dress that I wore <laughs> on Depop. And it's just like, memories at the corner of my mind. Okay, so these high-end luxury fashion brands aren't democratising fashion by creating like more accessible versions of their pieces. Shocker, right now. But basically, these high-low collabs are very mutually beneficial for both the luxury brand and the high street brand. I also think that these collaborations actually end up reinforcing the exclusivity of the high-end brands. Like me with my Jimmy Choo Juniors, you might be clamouring to get a piece of a luxury brand that you might otherwise struggle financially to attain, but the H&M version just doesn't feel quite the same. 
it just doesn't carry the same level of prestige and status that owning the actual high-end version does. Ultimately, you still do want to own the real Jimmy Choo's so that you can be properly part of the Jimmy Choo club, if that makes sense. Like, the brand still feels unattainable, aspirational, prestigious, even if you do own the H&M version. Uh, on this point, there's an extract from Business or Fashion. To be sure, owning a designer piece, whether from Mugler or any other luxury label, is a sensory and aesthetic experience that can't fully be replicated at a mass retailer. And fashion is a game of sharp, subtle belonging, which means no matter how close a product seems at first glance, true connoisseurs and industry insiders will always call out the dupe. And for those that can own the real deal, I don't think it's a stretch to believe that they may hold some distaste for these, like, duped versions even though they're like authorized dupes i feel like they may kind of see them as a bit tacky and illegitimate um this is a quick disclaimer i might have sounded kind of judgmental there which is totally not my intention i have nothing against anyone wanting to wear the um h&m versions of these high-end brands or like dupes in general i mean i had my jimmy Choo's. like i have nothing against it i was just trying to like just uh think about kind of the different kind of attitudes towards these um designer sanctioned dupes but no i don't have anything against it there's no shame in it have fun with fashion that's the whole point yeah i have um complicated and sometimes contradictory feelings about luxury fashion and yeah there's there's like a lot of complicated feelings there's very problematic aspects obviously but, you know, I'm not perfect. So what did you think of the Moogler and H&M collab? Did you buy anything from it? Did it interest you? And what do you think of these designer sanctioned dupes overall? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. See you again soon for more of these fanatical fashion frivolous videos. <laughs> Bye. Voila, duh. And then in 2018, American designer Casey Cadwallader. Cadwallader? Why can't I say that? <laughs>